Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Nerdy Coda. If you're the first time seeing my video, please give me a like and subscribe and share this video with others. This will give me more motivation to create new videos for you. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to avoid spaghetti code with MVC pattern. Spaghetti code is a term that describes code as messy, tangled, and hard to follow. It often happens when write code without a clear structure or design. We end up with functions that do too many things, have too many parameters, or are too long. Spaghetti code makes it difficult to debug, test, reuse, or modify our code. In my last video, I showed you how to create a very simple calculator REST API using Node.js, Express.js, and TypeScript. If you want to learn more about REST API or how to build a REST API, please check out my last video. In this calculator API, we have a middleware folder containing all the middlewares used in our REST API. We also have a routes folder containing all the routes. If you go to the file for the calculator route, not only do we have all the paths in the same file, we have the business logic for all the paths in the same file as well. This is the logic to get all calculations. This is the logic to get calculation by ID. This is the logic to delete a calculation. This is the logic to update a calculation. And this is the logic to create a calculation. We have the logic for routing, accessing the request, calculating the result, and also formatting the response all in the same file. This may be okay for learning and very simple APIs. But as you expand the logic, that encode the access databases, perform more complex calculations, the code will soon become as play as spaghetti. One way to avoid spaghetti code is to use the MVC pattern. MVC stands for Model View Controller. And it is a design pattern that helps us separate our code into three distinct components, the model, the view, and the controller. The model is responsible for managing the data and the business logic of our application. The view is responsible for displaying the data and the user interface of our application. The controller is responsible for handling the user input and coordinating the communication between the model and the view. By using the MVC pattern, we can make sure our code is more modular, readable, and testable. We can also avoid duplication, coupling, and complexity in our code. In this video, I will explain how you could apply the MVC pattern to our Express.js REST API. MVC pattern is traditionally used in desktop applications in which the view or the UI is integrated with the model and the controller. However, in REST API, there's no view. But you can consider the API contract as the view. An API contract is like a menu for a restaurant. If you order one plate of spaghetti, and the menu say you will have two meatballs on it, you will get exactly what you order. An API contract helps people who make apps and websites to use other services easily and correctly. When you make an API call to create a calculation, an API contract will specify what information you need to provide in the request and in what format. It will also tell you what response you will get back in its format. The model should only contain the business logic. In the case of a calculator API, the model will perform the calculation and generate a result. The controller will get the request through the router, coordinate with the model to perform the calculation, and then prepare a JSON response according to the API contract. Your REST API will most likely have a database. The best way is to abstract the database access with a data access layer. In our case, we will have the controller coordinate the data access, such as saving and retrieving the calculations. However, if your business logic is tightly integrated with data access, you may consider having the model coordinate data access through the data access layer. We'll use several tools and design patterns to help us implement the MVC pattern using object-oriented programming. We'll use OpenAPI to create the API contract. OpenAPI is a standard way of writing API contracts. It uses a simple and readable format to describe how an API works and what it can do. OpenAPI helps developers to create, document, and use APIs easily and consistently. We'll use data transfer object, short for DTO, to carry data between client and server. 
DTOs are simple objects which don't carry any behavior or business logic. In our Express.js API, DTOs will be simple JavaScript objects which can be converted from and to JSON. The converted JSON should conform to the API contract. We'll create domain objects to implement business logic. A domain object is an object that represents a concept or entity from the problem domain. It encapsulates the data and behavior that are relevant to the domain. In our calculator API, our domain object could be an object of the calculator class. To convert between DTO and domain object, we'll create a data mapper. The only responsibility of a data mapper is to convert from a DTO to a domain object and vice versa. For data access, we will use data access object, short for DAO. A DAO is a pattern that provides an abstract interface to some type of databases or other persistent mechanism. It hides the details of data access from the rest of the application and allows the application to interact with the data through a generic API. A DAO can be implemented for different types of data sources, such as relational databases, web files, web services, etc. A DAO usually contains methods for create, read, update, and delete operations on the data. However, if your domain object is very complex and you need to save your domain data across multiple database tables, you may consider using the repository pattern. Repository pattern is a higher level abstraction of the data access layer and could be implemented with multiple DAOs, one DAO for each database table. In my next video, I will get hands on and show you how to refer to our calculator REST API with the MVC pattern. I will show you the best tools to use in conjunction with Node.js, Express.js, and TypeScript. This is the video I wanted to share with you today. If you like this video and find this video helpful, please give me a like and subscribe and share this video with others. This will give me more motivation to create new videos for you. Thank you for your support. Goodbye and see you in the next video.